Hello and welcome to Lightworks. In this tutorial, we're going to take a closer look at working with the Lightworks config.dat file. The config.dat file, although really for R&D use, has been revamped for version 12.5 to give users the ability to change aspects and behavior of the Lightworks application to tailor Lightworks just how you like it. Under the Windows operating system, the config.dat file resides in the Lightworks installation folder. Here, I'm going to reveal the 64-bit install location. Under C, we'll find the config.dat file. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. When you make changes to the config.dat file, you simply open up the file in a text document, make the changes, and then save it. Then you'll need to relaunch Lightworks after each change before the modification is implemented. All the config entries appear after the first brackets config entry and before the closed brackets config entry. Let's have a look at the form of one of them. Where you see a hashed out comment, it simply describes the entry that follows. This first one configures the number of undo steps that are configured for each edit. Its entry is backup underscore depth and its default value is 10. And you can see each following entry has the same form. A hashed out description followed by a config entry that allows modification. Well, let's start with the first one and try some modifications to the backup depth or undo stages available as you work. We have a backup depth value in our config dat of 10. This means I've got 10 available undo steps. I'm now going to make 11 changes to my sequence with a combination of trimming and marked range clip removal. Edit number one is going to be to mark and park this first region here containing the orange shot at the beginning. Let's delete that. And now I'm going to quickly perform 10 trims. OK, so that's done. If I go back through the undo steps 10 times, we go back to where we started, but not quite. If I press it for an 11th time, our orange shot that we lifted in the first place has not been replaced. So what I'm going to do is close Lightworks, relaunch the config dat, and change my backup depth value for the undo stages to 15. When you make a change, don't forget to resave the file. An important thing to note, if you do have trouble saving the config dat file with an access denied error, is to make sure that in the appropriate program files folder, you have the correct write permissions set on your operating system. Here in Windows, under Security, I can see that the administrator, who's logged in now, has full control of this folder with read and write permissions. If you don't have write permissions, and when you try and save the file, you're warned that you don't have permission, you can either change the folder and file permissions, or lift the config file out of this folder, make the change, and then place it back into the install location. So backup depth has been changed to 15. Let's relaunch Lightworks. Now put that missing shot back in on my timeline. Let's make some changes now. Stepping back. We can see we've gone right back through to the first stage. So now we know what we're doing. Let's jump through the rest of the entries and see what we can change. This next section, the milestone configuration, I'm going to leave until the end of the video, and we'll return to that. The next thing I want to look at is the pre-roll duration. By default, this is set to 3 seconds. I've mapped my preview shortcut to Ctrl and P on the keyboard. You can do this in your shortcut assignments panel in the Lightworks preferences. Let's have a look at previewing this cut here. Pressing Ctrl P, I go back from 32 seconds to 29 seconds. Well, I'm not sure he's noticed yet. Yeah, I know. Let's make that 5 seconds. Close Lightworks, straight to the config dat, put in a value of 5, save the file. Now when I press Ctrl P, we go from 32 back I'm to 27. Well, I'm not sure he's noticed yet. Nice. Yeah. Giving ourselves a 5 second pre-roll now. The next entry concerns the shot real data that's exported with an EDL. By default, Lightworks exports your real data into an EDL with an 8 character limit. But sometimes real IDs contain more than 8 characters. Let's have a look at the real data on all of these shots. In list view, my real number for all the shots in the edit is 1234567891. 
0.001. If I quickly export a standard EDL to the desktop, we can see that this column here, where the real information is kept in the EDL, has been truncated, 6789-001. I need to make sure that I get all my real information into this file. Closing Lightworks, let's modify the config, set the value to zero to lift the eight character limitation. Now repeating that export process. Now my real field is populated with the full amount of characters. The next entry, Trim Avoid Silence, refers to how you monitor audio while you're trimming with Lightworks. By default, when you trim a cut with two moving sides, Lightworks will always monitor the audio from the side closest to the current time indicator on your edit. If this is placed near the side with silence, you can end up listening to silence as you trim. To automatically monitor the non-silent side, we need to set the value to 1. Let's have a look at that. So I'm going to trim this cut over here with a cut point trim. Now if my cursor was here and I press play, we'll snap to monitoring the incoming silent section that you see in black. No audio. Straight back to the config file. Change the value to avoid the silent monitoring to 1. Trim again will monitor the outgoing side of the yellow shot you see. Back to the cut point trim. Hit play. Indeed it is. What's the point? We can now monitor the outgoing audio and avoid that silence. The next entry tells Lightworks how to handle tiles when popping out from viewers. By default, popped out tiles are revealed in the content manager. If I pop out the tile from this viewer, it's revealed automatically in the content manager. In the recent filter section, you may prefer the legacy behavior of Lightworks, where the tile is ejected from the viewer and placed on the Lightworks desktop. To change that behavior, simply change reveal tiles in bins to zero. Now if we pop out the tile from the viewer, it's placed on the Lightworks desktop. The next entry concerns the colouring of the audio waveforms. In Lightworks, we have our audio waveform displayed in this contrasting grey colour on the segments. If you want to make that darker, closer to black, or lighter, closer to white, you can change the value. I'm going to set my value to zero. Now my audio waveforms are fully black, making them much more prominent. On the other side of the scale, let's try and set them to white. Setting a value of 2 will make them white. And there you go. The next entry refers to the area of a segment that's active when you pick it up for drag and drop operations. When you pick up a segment on the timeline to drag and drop it elsewhere, Lightworks divides the segment into three areas. On the left and the right, you'll see the trim rollers appear on the mouse head. In the central third, you'll see the black arrows left and right. It's only in this central region that you can pick up a clip and move it to drag and drop it. To change the size of this central drag and drop hotspot region, modify the config dat. I want to make it a bit smaller, so that only around the middle area we're able to drag and drop a segment. I'm going to make it 0.2. Now only this small central region here do I get the drag and drop on my arrowhead. If you want to disable the ability to drag and drop segments completely, simply set the value to zero. Now in all cases I'm unable to access the drag and drop area on a segment. It's effectively disabled the function on the timeline. The next entry is about controlling tile drag and drop from the bin into the edit timeline. By default, the Lightworks edit will accept tiles dragged and dropped from the bin. If we disable this functionality by setting the strip V accept tiles value to zero, it's no longer possible to drag a tile from the bin onto the timeline. It's totally disabled. The next entry, viewer accept tiles, refers to the ability of Lightworks to drag and drop tiles from your content manager into an open viewer. If I pick up one of my source clips and drop it in my edit viewer, I can cut that shot into the timeline. I may want to disable that behavior. 
To inhibit the behavior, set the value to zero for this parameter. Now, if I pick up a source clip, I'll be unable to drag and drop it into a viewer. It just doesn't work. The sorted racks entry has recently been introduced. If I take one of my groups from the content manager bins list, tear it off and pop it on the Lightworks desktop, we can now see that we got group day one with bins one, two, and three inside it. If I reorder, set the order to two, one, and three, nothing has changed either on my group tabs of the bins here or in my content manager bins list inside the group here. To respect the reordering changes made in this rack container, modify the config dat to respect the resorting of bins in racks. Now, if I reorder, we're now going two, three, then one. We have two, three, and one here. And also, the list is respected two, three, and one here. Let's quickly do one more. Two, one, three, two, one, three. Now at the end, you'll see additional entries of your own can be added here. Now you know how to add them, let's add a new one. This entry I've added here adds more contrast and pronounces the appearance of column edges in the content manager. Its default value is 0.2 and larger values make it look brighter. So having a look at the default value, here are the column edges, boundaries in between our columns. Let's change the value to 0.5. Now I can see the columns have become more pronounced. Let's increase that a bit further to a value of 1. And now those column edges are much more pronounced. There's one entry we missed out at the beginning and I said I'd return to it. That's this section here, the milestone configuration for your edit files. If we return to the Lightworks project folder, in addition to our regular ED5 backup stages, we also have a folder called Milestones. Now the edit I've been working on is 0x2e. Inside this folder are the milestones that have been created while I've been working on this edit. Milestone backups for the edit are created after 10 edit operations or mods. You don't have to save anything in Lightworks as every change or modification is saved automatically. This includes moving panels, viewers and so on. Lightworks also backs up anything else you delete. So if you delete a clip or a subclip or an edit, it's saved automatically in the milestones folder and any mistakes that you make can be undone. By default, we store 10 milestones per edit. The milestones are numbered from zero through nine, but are not necessarily in chronological order. So if we hit date modified, I can see the timing of each of these milestones that the system has been making. Remember, each milestone stage represents 10 modifications. And that's what the final config entry here represents. It represents the amount of milestones that are stored for each individual edit, default is 10, and the amount of modifications that can be made in each milestone. So you can change this value to add more milestone stages for each edit in your milestones folder and allow more modifications between saving each milestone. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video learning about how to modify the config dat file and that now you're further able to set up Lightworks just how you like it. Thanks for watching.